We are a software vendor. We founded the company in 2004, meaning we're almost nine years old now. We develop software in the areas of value-added services. Well, during the for, for first years of activity, we focused on messaging services like SMS centers, campaign managers, SMS MMS gateway. And for four or five years now, we've been into uh, big data, trying to help operator collect data from the network, from the information system, in order to monetize it and try to create value with such data. You know, four years ago, I had a chat with the chief marketing officer of a um, well-known operator in Cameroon. And I asked him, what's the profile of an average subscriber uh, within, your, within your subscriber base? And he answered, he didn't know. I, I asked him, what, you didn't know? You don't know. Is it male, female? Do they live in cities, in rural areas? What kind of services, mobile services are they using? And he couldn't answer that. And back then, I realized that operators in Africa were not able to address customer experience management since they didn't get to know their, their subscribers. The reason for that is that they're most of the time 99% prepaid. And you know, in Europe, we know the subscribers as per the invoice, meaning operators know the kind of services you use, how much voice you use, for example, while in Africa, they don't have such information. The reason for that is that there's no invoice, so you can't get to know the subscriber per the invoice. Well, when you want to enable um, customer experience management within the network, you have to, to know your customer. So you have to collect information about the usage of uh, mobile services, um, like voice, of course, like text, like data sessions. Are people using Facebook? For example, Facebook through USSD. Um, are people using their mobile money account in order to order services, in order to pay for services, in shops, for example? And that for you need to enable some kind, some kind of platform or database where you can store individually um, the usage information of your subscribers. This doesn't mean operators get the access to the content of the communications, like voice communication, text, etc. They're just accessing uh, what we call metadata, meaning information about the average length of calls. Are they on net calls, off net calls, international calls? Are they calls placed in to, to people in the same city or not? Um, when they're sending texts, at which time of the day? So that they get to know better their subscribers, and that way they can improve the radio coverage, they can improve the efficiency of the network, they can offer new innovative services by uh, analyzing the usage data of the different mobile services. So the, um, the issue there four years ago was to enable, to, to, to give the basic platform to operators so that they can enable customer experience management. And therefrom, they derived a very exhaustive system like we do in Europe, in Northern America, in Southeast Asia, in order to adapt progressively the services, the quality of service, to the expect expectancies of subscribers. You know, one distinguishes uh, usually several kinds of services. Services for subscribers, services for third parties like brands, who are expecting, for example, to enable mobile advertising, but also internal services, meaning services for the marketing department, for example. So, um, so, so there are current services and prospected services. For example, marketing department, thanks to um, technologies like ours, are today able to understand how people are using the services, the mobile services, what kind of them, uh, where the value is, and this is uh, very important to them. And this can be achieved everywhere in Africa. While for subscribers, we have seen uh, big data enabled services in northern countries, in southern countries, where there, there is an interest, for example, for unified loyalty programs, where you can get awards and points from your mobile, from your landline, from your internet access, for example, mobile broadband access. And as for brands, it's more complicated because the market is uh, pretty narrow for now. They are waiting, they are expecting, for example, location-based advertising because they want to push the right content to the right people in the right place. 
and um, uh, technology speaking, this is pretty easy to achieve. But um, as a brand, if you are to invest in such a program, you want to have an audience. And operators have an audience, but um, in cities, it's not that large. And brands are as well interested by geomarketing services, meaning they want, for example, to improve the location of their retail shops depending on the targets. For example, a brand selling video games is willing to sell to male people between 15 and 45 years old, and um, this is as well achievable through technology. But again, the, the market is narrower than in Western countries. So um, this is raised a perspective, something that is of interest today, but is going to make money in uh, three, four, five years from now. Customers expect to do more and more things through their mobile device. You know, for example, in, uh, in, country, in African countries where there was a, a crisis, like a, a civil war um, in Ivory Coast, for example, a few years ago, people began to use more and more their mobile money account uh, to put their money. They felt safer having their money in their SIM card rather than having their money uh, on them or in their houses. So it's very interesting because um, the mobile handset and the mobile SIM card can be uh, the center of a full bunch of services, uh, financial services, mobile health, mobile education services, for example, uh, unified communications. You know, um, we have to imagine how each kind of digital service can be implemented um, in the mobile handset. And that for you, have, you have to try to bring everybody on the mobile, meaning you have to open up APIs in order to be able to interact with subscribers and to open that to third parties, to brands, to uh, app developers, for example. So the operators have to open such APIs and help brands and third parties qualify the subscribers. And there is a privacy issue here. You have to make the right trade-off between the privacy issues and giving a little bit of information about the subscribers so that third parties are able to target the right subscribers. So this has to go through opt-in, of course, but we, we try to help operators in opening the right kind of information uh, towards the, such third parties. And this is mainly related to usage information. For example, we can uh, collect data about whether people are using social networks or not. We're not going to qualify whether they're using Facebook or any other social network. We are not getting to know what kind of information they're publishing, but just whether they're interested or not um, within, uh, with, uh, with social networks. So this is the kind of information we help operators make available to our third parties in order to push the right content in the right place to those subscribers. You, I, I'm thinking um, of a concrete example, for example, with um, Orange in Tunisia. They launched um, six months ago a unified loyalty program over their different channels, meaning mobile, mobile broadband, etc. And they have very, very good results. So we can see that subscribers are expecting to receive more and more services with a handset. And this has to be done collecting their big data if you want to be able to target them with the right services so that they gain interest in those services.